Welcome back. So I got these uh, bits of spring steel uh, cut by the local uh, sheet metal shop. They cut them on their uh, shear and also punched the holes in there for me. So this is the new spring setup there, partially assembled. That's how it's going to work. And this is what it looks like installed. So the next thing for me to do now, because it's going to be slightly different in terms of the pressure, it's a little bit um, more rigid. So I'm going to have to tune that in um, by taking it down the runway and just seeing where the where the trim is there. And you can see I've got some holes there and I can drill more holes in there if I need to tighten it up a little bit. All right, so next up, what I'm doing here is um, a bit of a sort of stress test on the engine. But before I get into that, let me just to say a few words here. Yeah, I wanted to let everybody know that I'm not the only person working on this project right now. I might be the only one out here in Georgia, but I do have a group of people on the West Coast that are helping me with technical stuff and also we're you know, planning on the uh, production phase of this aircraft. So just relax a little bit if you think it's just me working on this project. Okay, so the purpose of this test was to find out what power setting uh, while sitting on the ramp here that uh, all the temperatures get into equilibrium. In other words, I can just maintain that power and it, it won't overheat. So uh, as you can see here, this is towards the end of the run there. I run it for about an hour. I've got it running at 2400 RPM there. And uh, you know, there, you can see most of the temperatures there, but the ones that are more important here are the coolant temp there and the oil temp. So they're 225 and 246, which is acceptable. So now I know, um, you know exactly how much power I can do, worst case scenario with I'm just getting you know, on the ramp cooling here and what power I can maintain. Okay, so this is how it looked in the log. And as you can see down the bottom there, 83 minutes and basically 66 minutes running on the ramp there. So what I did initially, took it up to 20 milligrams of fuel, which is, you know, the maximum fuel is 90 milligrams where I've got it set. So at 25% throttle, you can see it basically stabilized there with the engine oil temp about 210. And so then I stepped it up a little bit more to 24 and the oil temp and the coolant temp were still rising there, but I was like, okay, I need it to go a little higher than that. So I took it up to 27. And at this point it was gonna run away or at least go beyond the 235 sort of um, maximum coolant temp that I wanted to do. So I turned the heater on and uh, that immediately sends that cool, about a gallon of coolant there um, that's cold into the system and it basically drops the temperature there. And uh, with the heater running, it's like having an additional radiator there. So uh, I ended up running it up there to 28.9 milligrams of fuel and it stabilized again there, 248 on the oil temp and 227 on the coolant. So I'm happy with that. Um, so I know there I can set that amount of fuel, uh, worst case scenario for cooling. So this red line down the bottom there, that's the temperature coming out, the air blowing out the bottom of the radiator. And the orange line there is a very makeshift temperature sensor that I put on the hot um, coolant going from the engine back to the radiator. And that's probably not reading very well because it's just sort of attached to the aluminum tube. Um, anyway, and so over here, this is where I did this little short run down the runway there. Didn't really even take it to full power. I just wanted to see how that affected the temperatures once the aircraft was moving. And I haven't really had a chance to sort of analyze this yet to see what it all means. Um, you know, I've done this obviously before, but I wanted to compare it to sitting on the ramp and then running down the runway. So there you can see, you know, where the temps were there on everything. And as I said, I haven't really had a chance to look at this uh, in detail yet to see what it means. But potentially we may end up um, funneling the feed back from the heater loop back through the radiator instead of directly back into the engine. That way when I have this extra coolant tanks um, put in there, I'm running a lot more coolant more quickly through the radiator and things will cool down more. So I did actually receive um, the new tanks for the nose um, late this afternoon, but I haven't obviously had a chance to do anything with them yet. I will be um, working on getting those installed over the next couple of days. Anyway, so this was just a quick run down the runway. Uh, really the purpose of this was to see if I could dial in this trim setting, but I wanted to see what's going on there at the wing strake there. And you can see, um, you know, worried about uh, span wise flow there, but if you look at the telltales, you see they're actually pulling inboard rather than outboard there, the ones that are right where the transition is, because they're, they're right on the, the transition line there, and you can see they're pulling inboard towards the fuselage, which is interesting. So we're not getting any spam-wise flow outboard there, which is a good thing, but 
I'll have to see how that plays out, you know, once the aircraft is airborne or even just in ground effect. But, you know, I just wanted to get this camera angle sorted out to see how well I can see what's going on there. So I think that's going to work in terms of an angle. So anyway, uh, still got a bunch of stuff to do, obviously. Get these new tanks installed, get the CG dialed in, um, get the elevator trim you know, set for takeoff again. So, you know, because I want to make it sure, you know, when that aircraft comes off that the trim is pretty much set where it needs to be to maintain a level flight. And with the CG moved forward, the aircraft should be flying at maybe one degree or two degrees nose up instead of five degrees like it was before. And that should help with the stability, should help with the cooling, and uh, should also help um, with the power because it won't be so draggy. And as I said before, you know, the four plane will be carrying a lot more load and that doesn't generate as much drag because of its profile compared to what the wing does when it's generating the same amount of lift. Anyway, that's just a quick update for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Tune in again uh, next week and uh, see what I have for you. Thanks again for watching.